Hello and welcome to the 5 year anniversary vlog! <laughs> I'm excited! Today is the 12th of March 2020. I am with Andy for 5 years now. We've kissed for the first time 5 years ago and that's the date we decided it's going to be our anniversary date. And I've booked a surprise hotel. He doesn't know where we're going and that's just my gift for our anniversary and I am so excited to take you along. So I've prepared a couple of questions gave them to Andy, he recorded his answers. Where did we meet? I was traveling around the world all by myself. I was absolutely not available for guys or dating. I was full on on my eat, pray, love, find myself trip. And then I arrived in Sydney, Australia, and I got a job. On day one, I was like super keen. I wanted to immigrate to Australia and had super high hopes about the job. And Andy was the trainer. And I actually liked him from the very first day because we had like a similar humor. So we kind of clicked right away. And he was my trainer for the first two weeks in the new job. Afterwards, he was my supervisor on the shift. And that was all a total no-go for me. Like I don't like dating supervisors and all those kind of things. It took a while until we actually didn't work the same shift anymore. Until I was open to the idea to go on a date with him. What's for breakfast today? Vietnamese breakfast. Adventure mode today. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. So Andy thinks it's a good idea to have six bags because I didn't tell him that we're flying with a private helicopter. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll survive. Yeah. Ready? Thank you. Ready. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> The driver said, are you going to the no. airport? And I said, no, Bye. one time here. The driver said, <laughs> Who's better at keeping surprises? I think I might be better at keeping surprises. We love surprises, both of us. I hate when he keeps surprises, though. I'm so impatient then. My internet just ran out. And I think we're almost there. And he still doesn't know where we're going. Who knows what we're doing? What was the first thing you've noticed about Andy? I started this job during November. Guys do this moustache thing. That was totally not my thing. <laughs> very excited about the job. I hadn't certainly seen anyone that excited. He was just very fun. Like he had a really cool authority when teaching and I was kind of hanging on his lips because I really wanted to do a good job and he was just a great, great teacher and mentor. My first impression was what this is supposed to be a super nice fancy hotel. It's on this harbor that is not looking nice at all. But this is just the docking station where you then go over to the actual island where the hotel is. Excited? I am excited. Are you excited? Of course I am. Any moment we're getting on. First on the boat, maybe. Probably. Which one is it? <laughs> no. This one? No, there's Mount Pop. There, the green one. Who's the biggest spender? That's me overall, yeah. Usually I'd say Andy on like small stuff, like chips and chocolate and food. And like he doesn't overthink spending so much as much as I do. But then I think I'm the biggest spender on five star hotels and oh, let's take the business class flight and oh, I want to invest in this business coach, $10,000. Who's the better cook? He is. I cook 90% of the times we cook. I absolutely enjoy cooking, so I'm not more than happy to do it. Who is the more adventurous? Andy is. That's 100% me, 100%. Who said I love you first? I did. I also remember where. It was at the Red Panda Enclosure at Taronga Zoo in Sydney. And I remember she, it's a, there's a little rock that goes up in front of her where you get a better view and she walked up there and then told me she had something she needed to tell me. And I could feel it was gonna come. It was really romantic. I was also really scared that he would say nothing in return or something like that. But he did say I love you too in return. What are you doing? Nothing. And that's exactly what I intend to do for the next four days. Good. Hey all, we just arrived and now we're relaxing in this hammock kind of thing. Um, and just chilling. This place is pretty beautiful. Uh, so Susie's made good choices here. And uh, we're going to enjoy the next four days with uh, minimal, 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 minimal work. So here we're going for a little journey and look what we found. The pool! And look who we found! How did you fall in love? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember just kind of staring after her thing. Really interesting girl. I could certainly date her and I'm a bit uh, awestruck uh, at that moment. My colleague who was sitting across the desk from me at the time uh, kind of laughed and he said that she's really into you. 
Turns out she she was, which is good. We actually wanted to go to the movies one day and then I panicked and I was like, oh my God, I'm not even ready for a relationship and I don't want this and oh my God. I was so overwhelmed that I just sent him a message that I don't feel ready and that I don't want to have a relationship and that, you know, like, no. And when I've sent it, I've actually cried. Kind of felt wrong. So he was like, oh, okay, so I get that. And he, you know, he's just a super nice and understanding guy, whatever you do. Then he said, so you don't want to go to the movies anymore on Friday. And I was like, no, yeah, I do want to go to the movies on Friday. And then I actually went on a cruise by myself. I had a lot of time to think. And there was a book called The Rosie Project, which is about a guy that has a very, very strict idea of how he wants his partner to be like. And the lesson of the book is that you will not be happy with this kind of person and that you just have to, you know, follow your heart. And I read that on the cruise ship whilst being by myself and kind of missing Andy and I was like, okay, maybe I should just let go of my own list of how I think things should be and just trust that he makes me feel good. And I think that's kind of how I fell in love with Andy because the feeling good just never went away. It's the living room, it's the bed. She panicked for like 30 seconds because she just saw this and she was like, oh my God, I gotta go to reception. I gotta yell, I gotta scream. But then, look what we found. How did he make you grow during the last five years? Pushing me to become a better person and a better version of myself. She's been doing that pretty much since day one. Motivate me to get back into the gym and improve myself physically and mentally. You know, just being happy with where I am and not always chasing for more or wanting more or wanting more success and wanting more achievement and really seeing the beauty in what we already have, which is the most extraordinary life that most people never get a chance to live like this. Who initiated the first kiss? That was me. In Gordon's Bay, which is a beautiful beach in Sydney, Australia. But it took me a while because I really didn't know what she wanted. We just walked along the beach and then we saw on top of a mountain, like a shrine. What was the biggest adventure of the last five years? Moving in with each other relatively quickly because we both had a shared house. I had a shared house, he had a shared house in Sydney. Well, really just starting this journey, this travel journey. As soon as my visa was approved and I was able to quit my job, basically I did want to hand in notice the very next day and I said, do you want to quit the job with me and we travel? For as long as we can, we'll see how it goes. I work on my business. And he didn't have a business at that time and didn't work for me as well. He just quit his job, sold everything and we went off. And that was crazy because I never thought I would find someone who would do that with me. That was three years ago. And it's been the craziest three years I've ever had. Good morning. It's day two. We're up early. Like always. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, welcome to living with me. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to have breakfast. And then. Yeah. What? I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fun day over the last five years. Uh, we've had a lot of them. We usually do parties but that was a really good party but we had a lot of fun there with friends in Sydney and like it was a 70s party. Probably one of the most enjoyable days. Uh, funnest days probably the Sandals Resort that we went to in St. Lucia. Playing chess, chilling in a hammock, swimming, swimming in the ocean, swimming in the pools. Oh, great day. What was the most challenging over the last five years? 
working together. I hired Andy full-time in my business a bit more than a year ago now. Communication, like I sometimes am probably not the easiest CEO to communicate with, especially when you spend your whole day with me. Like we're together 24 seven around the world, never the same conditions. Deciding what to eat. I know that's kind of weird, but because we don't have a kitchen, because I can't cook, we can't prepare food. I found it challenging to always have like boundaries, like when are we working together and when is he my assistant and does stuff for me and when are we actually off and have private time and have fun. Quit time! We have this beautiful little black book that we've been tracking our travels since May 2017. That's when our round the world trip started. <laughs> it just never ended for the last three years. Where have we been? 20th of January 2018. Hanoi, but we might have still been in Germany, but I'm gonna say Hanoi. Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> Correct! 15th of January 2019. Daisy and Billy still. Daisy and Billy in Sydney. It was a fun house in April 2019. Yeah, is the hint. Piroshka. Yeah, Piroshka. Where was that? Uh, Bronte. In Bronte in Sydney. All right, so your turn. Where were we on the 29th of June 2019? We were in Germany with the three little beagles near Wiesbaden. Yes. 23rd of January 2019. It was Melbourne, South Bank. Oh, Melbourne? With a Australian Open. Oh, and I played the final table as the Aussie <laughs> Million Poker Tournament. That is very true. I went $13,000 there. Where were we? Who is more patient? <laughs> Andy. On the... I have no patience. People think that's a weakness. I say it's a strength. That's the speed. That's what's different in our relationship. It's the 28th of December, 2019. Sunshine Coast with Cat Dunny. We were still in Golden Beach. We moved to Dunny on the 29th. You got the area right. <laughs> it's like... 17 pages now. I actually wanted to count how many destinations we've been, you, been to. I know it's been 77 the first year and something like 60 the second year, but then we haven't counted the third year yet. When your life gets so amazing that you can't even catch up without writing it down, <laughs> then it's a dream life deluxe. Yeah. What's next for the next five years? I have no clue, which really scares the shit out of me in regards of where we're going to live, what we're going to do. Travel, enjoy life. See new places, discover new places. I know we're going to have a really good time. I do want to get married during the next five years. More five-star hotels, wouldn't say no to that. Slow it down though. So I want to have like a six months home base somewhere, maybe in Australia, and then have a three months Asia, three months Europe adventure. So I will never be the house with white picket fence and that's just it. If we ever have a home base, it will not be one fixed home base, it will probably be two or three home bases around the world. And maybe a ducks hunt or a beagle. But there will be lots of animals, lots of love and lots of travel. High five to me! <laughs> That's that. That's the last question. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much. See you later.